Hi, I'm Seb Shiro, and thanks for joining me. Today, I'll be demoing SAS Intelligence and Investigation Management. Specifically, I'll be showing you how it can be used to operationalize intelligence in a police force by allowing seamless transfer of information from desk-based staff to officers in the field and vice versa. But first, some orientation. This will be a split screen demo. On the left hand side, you'll see software from the point of view of a desk based analyst, someone sitting in the station, gathering lots of information and then pushing that out to other users in the field. And on the right hand side, you'll see our mobile application from the point of view of a field based operational staff going about their day to day business, accessing information and pushing their own into the system. So without further ado, Let's start the demo. So we'll log into our desktop software first. Now, this scenario is that of a missing child. So for the sake of argument, let's say that the call came in and our, was handled by our command and control center and a two-man car was dispatched to talk to the missing child's mother. So this is us entering the information into our intelligence system to see if we can aid and gather information which could help the investigation. So the child's name is Emma Cameron. She's nine years old. We have our photo and other information about her last known whereabouts. She was meant to return home at lunchtime, uh, but didn't arrive. And uh, this was confirmed by the school that she did, in fact, leave. So we're entering everything we can here. We're entering her last known location, which was her school, Kirkland High. And we'll fill all this out. Last person to see her was our teacher, Carol Rogers. And we'll enter the school's address here. which we plotted on a map, as well as uh, a witness statement from the last person to see her. So with that, the missing report, the missing person report is already in the system. Now our next step is to create an investigation from this so that we can start actioning um, some of the uh, investigation we want to do and tasking individuals with it. So we'll fill out a few necessary fields and we'll task it to my uh, mobile user. And that's created and the investigation has already been tasked out. So on our mobile device, we can log in now. Uh, and let's say we're uh, one of the members of the two man car who've been dispatched. I can take a look at my tasks and I can see that indeed the investigation which was created has been assigned to me. So I can drill into that, take a look at the investigation itself, which um, is understandably threadbare given it's just begun. But from there I can launch to take a look at the missing person report itself, which has a lot more information. In fact, the first things that come to my attention are a couple of warnings that are being highlighted. This is because there is already existing information in the system which is being highlighted to me here. So there's a potential history of domestic violence and the missing person is vulnerable given their age. And the rest of this information is at my fingertips um, and accessible to me so I can appraise myself of all that while I'm traveling to the uh, to the location of the interview. So in fact, I see the neighborhood is Burley. While we're en route, while my partner's driving, I can actually just do a bit of proactive searching myself just to get a better sense of the situation we're heading into. So we'll perform a neighborhood search for Burley. This will search for information reports raised recently um, relating to that neighborhood. And in fact, I can drill down 
even further and take a look at only the ones that were raised this month. So we have a few reports. In fact, a couple of them do seem to pertain to um, drug related activity. So that may be something um, worth considering. These sorts of things often are risk factors for uh, children in the area. Now back in the desktop, we want to start um, doing some, some desk-based research here. So we'll, firstly, we'll search for the address, which is uh, 4434 Spring Lane, and it is in the system, so we'll plot that on a map to get a better geographical sense of where we are. Now we'll do a one kilometer radius search from that point, um, searching for really anything that could be uh, of interest. So this will be a deeper search, a broader search, than we did from our mobile phone. And I can see a number of results. In fact, a couple of things leap out immediately. We have two registered sex offenders uh, within a one kilometer radius of the missing person's house. One is Suzanne Paris and the other is Fred Banks. So those are two individuals which um, I'd be very keen on finding out more information about. And in fact, I've plotted the locations on. You can see how close they were to the school and the household. So I'm adding them to a workspace to um, make sure I don't forget about them, and don't lose track. And later we'll actually link that to the investigation so that other users can um, see those links that I'm making. Another source of information I'm looking at here are information reports four of which are in the same location. In fact, if I overlay the um, address on top of it, I can see that the information reports pertain to the actual household. So there's a long uh, history here of information reports ranging through some fairly serious things like domestic abuse. So we'll also add that to my list of things to keep track of. And we'll link those later as well. In fact, if we plot those on a timeline, we can get a sense for the escalating nature um, of the abuse in the household, obviously culminating now in a missing child. So although I'm not getting any uh, concrete answers here, I am augmenting my understanding of the situation and finding out potential avenues of investigation that we should be researching. And I can dig in, into more depth if I wanted to, to look at the meat of some of these information reports. This one relates to an assault charge at that location. And I can see Janet Cameron, who was the person who first reported Emma's disappearance. So I could take a look at Janet's record if I want. I can see the things she's linked to. Probably I'm more interested in finding out about Paul, who seems to have been the abuser in these situations. I could take a look at his record as well, see any information we have on him, and also take a look at any other objects in the system that are related to him. So I see that he is the owner of a vehicle, and that maybe uh, will come in handy in, in the future. So back in the field from our mobile device, we'll take a look at the missing person report and see what the outcome of some of that desk-based research uh, has been. And so these have been updated by staff periodically. And so I can see some of the information that we've discovered here. I can see the news about the sex offenders in the vicinity. I can see the history of domestic abuse. And I can see some of the neighborhood risks, which um, I also uncovered from uh, some of my own research. And we can also see um, that we've linked a number of the information reports which were discovered during some of that research, uh, as well as the two known sex offenders. So I have that access now uh, to that information. So I'm fully appraised. And in fact, that's the key thing about this system is the, uh, the seamless stream of information back and forth is keeping everyone up to date and able to do their best, uh, their best work to maximize their impact. 
Now we're at a decision point here. We obviously have a couple of um, people we want to talk to. Um, so what we're doing here is creating some tasks that are spawning off of the main investigation, which can be handled concurrently while um, other interviews are happening. So we'll be assigning other staff to interview Suzanne and Fred regarding uh, Emma's disappearance. And those tasks actually will appear to all mobile users in the uh, target group, which in fact my mobile user is, is a member of. So he can see the task that's been sent out uh, with all the details and instructions on what information is uh, being sought after. So let's assume that through the course of our interview, we actually discover some information that we want to raise into the system and feedback to our colleagues in the station. So we'll create a new update ourselves and enter um, a discovery we made regarding a confrontation last night between Emma's parents. The argument was about vi uh, visitation rights of the children. Moreover, we also discovered a batch of letters um, correspondence between Paul and Emma, which uh, Emma's mother hadn't been aware of. And we were able to take a photo of that evidence and attach that as well. So we'll do that right now. And the benefit, benefit of this is obvious. The only alternative would have been to take a photo and later upload it back in the station. Whereas this way, it's available immediately to the staff in the office who can then choose to research that or derive the next course of action. So indeed, if I refresh the missing person investigation back in the station, I can see these updates, um, which are crucial in such a highly dynamic situation such as this, understanding the, least, the latest information as soon as possible, as close to real time as possible. So Paul Cameron is definitely becoming somebody that we want to find out more information about and reach out to as soon as possible. So um, we'll find his record, which we were already looking at earlier. And we can take a look at uh, all the information that's there. Um, but what I'm really interested in is his vehicle, which I remember seeing earlier. So we have his license plate. What we're going to do is take that number and search in our system for any number plate recognition hits within the last day in that area. So we've done a 10 mile radius uh, from Emma's house and we can see uh, a couple of hits on ANPR. One of which seems to be very close to our area of interest. In fact, we'll use our same trick as earlier do a one kilometer search from that point and validate um, my inkling that this is actually very close to all our other uh, activity. And in fact it is. So you can see at the bottom left we have the school in question and Emma's house at the top right. And right in between it is the ANPR hit. In fact, if we zoom in, it is exactly at the point um, at which Emma's route home would have been. So I'm going to take a photo of that and I'm going to add that to our, our updates as well. So we have our ANPR hits plotted here. Um, now what I actually want to do is um, annotate this to show the route and then better inform um, my colleagues in the field. And I'm actually going to ask them to maybe walk that route and see if they can find anything, see if anything seems out of place. And on my mobile device, if I reload the record, I'll see this latest information with the route and the ANPR hits as well. 
So let's assume that our field-based officers take a look at that route using uh, this information. And in fact, they do discover um, a couple of pieces of evidence. They find a bag, which um, they later determine did belong to Emma. So we'll take a couple of photos of it in situ before we touch the evidence. Um, and we'll immediately add that to the uh, investigation so that, again, our colleagues can be appraised as soon as possible. Now, this is obviously a very time critical situation and this latest piece of evidence only uh, serves to augment that perception. It's becoming clear that we uh, very rapidly need to be in touch with Paul Cameron and it strikes me that we only did a search for 10 miles last time we searched for ANPR and in fact uh, broadening that search uh, does reveal a third ANPR hit so then the trajectory is clear it's heading north away from uh, Emma's house and so we really do need to get in touch with Paul Cameron and work out if he has any information that could help us in our investigation. So what we're doing here is recording the fact that we did dispatch another car to intercept uh, Paul's car and, uh, and see if he has any information that could help us. And that is the end of our demo. I hope it's been illustrative in demonstrating a couple of key important facts. Without the station and their ability to um, collate and parse huge amounts of information quickly, the officers in the field would not have been informed or equipped to carry out the responsibilities. And without the information coming from the infield officers and the actions they were able to take, the station would not have been um, able to make decisive changes in their course of action because they wouldn't have had the information or evidence um, in a timely manner. So decision making has been improved by allowing the seamless flow of information back and forth between frontline and desk based users. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you for watching and goodbye.